Welcome to part one of this four-part series on using the printed PRDH for your French-Canadian research. This is Sandra Goodwin from Maple Stars and Stripes, your French-Canadian genealogy podcast at maplestarsandstripes.com. If you've ever visited the French-Canadian section of a genealogy library, you've probably seen this 47-volume set sitting lonely on the shelf. Notice that my library placed them on the bottom shelf, a sure sign of their lack of popularity. You may have even picked up a volume or two and looked through it. You may have even tried to use it. But if you're like most of my research friends, you found it very confusing and ended up putting it back on the shelf. Now, there are instructions on how to use the volumes in the beginning of the books, but they're in French. So if you don't read French, you're out of luck. Until now. Hopefully, after finishing this four-part video series, you will find the volumes extremely useful. Plus, if you go to my website at maplestarsandstripes.com newsletter and sign up to receive my newsletter, you will be sent a link to download a free PDF copy of the English translation of these instructions called The Key to the Repertory. Let's start by discussing what is the PRDH. First of all, PRDH stands for Programme de Recherche en Démographie Historique. In English, that equates to the Research Program in Historical Demography, which is being conducted out of the University of Montreal. It is a large-scale study of the population of the province of Quebec from the beginning of colonization in 1621 by using all the parish registers from Old Quebec. Now, you may have heard of or even use the online version of the PRDH. It is a wonderful resource that can be accessed, sometimes for free or a small fee, on computers in certain libraries across the country. You may also access it at home on a subscription basis. The price is scaled based upon the number of hits to which you subscribe. As of this recording, for Americans, prices range from approximately 16 cents Canadian currency per hit about 15 cents American money if you subscribe to 150 hits down to only 4 cents per hit for a subscription of 10,000 hits. A hit is considered to be any record accessed beyond the index whether it turns out to be the person for whom you're searching or not. Doing a search of the index is free. The online version of the PRDH offers so much more than what is in the 47 volumes. First of all, periodically there are corrections and updates made to the database. It includes baptisms, marriages and burials to 1799 with some burials as late as 1850 if the person was born in the first half of the 18th century. The online PRDH also groups families together, unlike the 47 volumes. It also allows you to link from one generation to the next fairly easily. The 47 volumes of the PRDH, on the other hand, are static, and they include baptisms, marriages, and burials up to 1765 only. So a researcher would have to work his or her way backwards to the 1765 time period before the volumes would be useful. So why bother learning how to use the 47 volumes in the first place? Well, you may not have access to or can't afford to subscribe to the PRDH from home. Or you're at a library that doesn't have a subscription to the online PRDH, but it does have this set. And if you are researching pre-1766, then these volumes become very valuable. Searching through these pages also gives you a time-based chronology of the life-changing events in your particular village of interest, not evident when using the online version. If you're doing collateral research especially, one page from these books usually contains several records of interest to your family research. In my experience, the most formidable barrier to using these volumes is a lack of understanding of how they are arranged or grouped. Here are the date ranges in each of the five groupings of volumes. As you can see, anything from the 1600s will be found in volumes 1 through 7. Volumes 8 through 17 cover records generated from 1700 to 1729. Volumes 18 through 30 cover information from 1730 to 1749. 
volumes 31 through 45 contain information from 1750 to 1765. And finally, the last two volumes, 46 and 47, cover records from the years 1700 to 1765 that were discovered after the publication of the earlier volumes. We will take a closer look at what's contained in each of these volume groupings a bit later. The inside back cover of the last two volumes contains a listing of all 47 volumes, as well as the list of parishes whose records are covered in each volume and any other record type found in that volume, such as census records. Other volumes have a similar list but only cover material up to the publication of that volume grouping. As you can see here, volumes 1 through 7 cover the 17th century. The general index to volumes 1 through 6 are found in volume 7. There is also an index located after each parish or record group. Volume 1 contains the baptisms, marriages, and burials from the parish of Notre Dame de Quebec. This parish is given the numerical designation of 451 throughout all the volumes. Volume 2 covers the baptisms, marriages, and burials from the Ile d'Orléans and the Côte de Beaupré. It lists all the parishes from these regions as well as each parish's numerical designation. So it continues for all the volumes. Now let's take a look at what types of records are found within each of these five volume groupings. First, as we said, volumes 1 through 7 cover the entire 17th century from the beginning of the colony to 1699. Volumes 1 through 5 contain the baptism, marriage, and burial records from all 51 parishes whose records survived for those years, including an individual index after each parish. The parishes are arranged by the three governmental jurisdictions at the time, Quebec, Trois-Rivières, and Montreal. Volume 6 covers other types of records. It covers abjurations, or recantations, which are the records created when someone recants their religion in favor of Catholicism. This occurred, for example, when someone of a different faith wished to marry a French Catholic, or when English captives carried to Canada renounced their Protestant faith to be baptized into the Catholic faith. Volume 6 also includes acts performed by the Jesuits in their travels into the wilderness, marriage contracts, immigration records such as those concerning the Carignan Regiment, engagement, which were records generated by those whose services were engaged and came to Canada by way of a labor contract, confirmation lists, sick lists, census records, and annulments. There is also a Quebec sick list in Volume 3 and mission records in Volume 5. If you know the parish, you can go directly to the index at the end of each parish or record group. Parishes are listed in chronological order by their numerical designations. But for most people, I'd recommend that you begin with the general index in Volume 7, which will tell you where your person appears throughout all record groups. In all cases from here on out, you could go directly to the index at the end of each parish or record group, but I am going to recommend that to use volumes 8 to 17 properly in order that you not miss your people in any record groups, you should start with the general index in the last two volumes, 16 and 17, which cover volumes 8 through 15. In these volumes, you will find the parish baptisms, marriages, and burials. Volume 8 contains sick lists as well as the 1716 census for Quebec. Volume 11 has the very small 1700 census of Mont-Louis, and the Montreal sick list is in Volume 13. For Volumes 18 through 30, you would begin with the general indexes in Volumes 29 and 30, or the individual parish indexes. Besides the baptisms, marriages, and burials for the period 1730 to 1749, Volume 18 contains the sick lists and census of 1744 for Quebec, and the Montreal sick list is in Volume 24. In this grouping, the last three volumes are used for the general index to the baptisms, marriages, and burials found in Volumes 31 to 42. Sick lists for Quebec are in Volume 31, 
Records from the Mission of the Eurons of Jeune Lorette are in Volume 33, and Montreal Cyclists are in Volume 37. Volume 46 contains additional records for the 1700 to 1765 time period, grouped first by record type, baptisms, marriages, then burials, then by parish numerical order, and within those, by date of record. Then come the abjurations, including many of the captives carried to Canada during the French and Indian Wars, marriage annulments, confirmations, sick lists, immigrant lists, naturalizations, marriage rehabilitations, and evidence of freedom to marry, which means certification by those wanting to get married in New France that they were not already married in France or whichever country they came from. Volume 47 contains the 1760 census for Trois-Rivières and the 1762 census for Quebec and a partial census from 1765. That is followed by the general index for the last two volumes. In the very back of volume 47 is a table of contents showing all the volumes in which each parish can be found. Don't forget to go to maplestarsandstripes.com slash newsletter to get your copy of the key to the repertory. Between the key and these videos, the printed PRDH should no longer be a mystery to you. To learn more about all three PRDH formats, go to my podcast and show notes for the PRDH episode at maplestarsandstripes.com slash 26. Now that you understand how the volumes are arranged, Using the printed PRDH Part 2 will demonstrate how to use the indexes to easily locate the information you need. Please join us for Part 2.